While the number of vaccinated Americans slowly climbs, vaccine hesitancy still remains a major stumbling block, one that's been fueled by a flood of misinformation from anti-vax groups. Our next guest wrote an op-ed for CNN.com titled, quote, anti-vaxxers are using the same tactics as cults do to attract followers on social media. In it, he writes, quote, in 1974, I was recruited into a cult. Thankfully, after two and a half years, I was deprogrammed and realized my mind had been hacked. Looking back, though, I see that the fear tactics that were used to recruit and keep me in the cult are the same ones that leaders of the anti-vaccination ideology are using today to attract and retain followers via social media and other outlets. Joining us now is Stephen Hassan. He's a licensed mental health professional and an expert on cults, obviously. Stephen, we're grateful that you are with us this morning. We appreciate your expertise. Help us understand how the tactics of a cult overlap with the anti-vax community. So there are several components of a mind control authoritarian movement or cult. Um, and in particular, there are two points I want to make. One is information control, which is lying, outright lying, withholding vital information or distorting it intentionally. And then the second point is part of the BITE model, the behavior, information, thought, and emotional control model that I've developed is the deliberate installation of phobias or irrational fears to uh, short circuit people's critical thinking and analytic minds to be so afraid that they're misjudging the danger that people are in. So what I want to tell the public is that fear is good if there's real danger. We need to be able to react uh, and get away from anything that's really, truly dangerous, like the COVID-19 uh, epidemic, pandemic. And a phobia is where you believe something's dangerous, but there's very little risk of any danger. And the way to tell the difference is we need to look at facts. We need to analyze data to assess, oh, I'm in the Africa savanna, there's a lion, I, I, the, I, my life may be over versus I'm sitting in my living room watching a movie of a lion attacking and I'm here safe in my living room. I shouldn't react <laughs> like that. And people need to understand to control their minds. Uh, otherwise, other people will control it for them. But in a world where you have the opportunity to choose the information that you consume and often it's misinformation that you consume, especially on social media. Uh, how would you approach someone who's gone down that rabbit hole, you, especially a loved one? It, it makes it frustrating to try to convince people that you care about that they should get vaccinated. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the keys is when I was in the moon cult, I didn't believe I was in a cult. I didn't believe I was brainwashed or mind control. I believed the world was controlled by Satan. And so I was indoctrinated to do thought stopping. I had these phobias put in my mind. And one of the things I put in the op-ed piece was I was deliberately taken to see the Exorcist movie in 1974, along with hundreds of other Moonies. And then Sun Myung Moon, the cult leader, who claimed to be the Messiah and 10 times greater than Jesus, said God made this movie. And this movie was a prophecy of what would happen if you left the church. So I was so afraid of evil spirits. Before the cult, I didn't believe in Satan. I'm Jewish. But they had indoctrinated me so much with fear um, that I couldn't imagine ever questioning Moon or leaving the cult. And what's happening now, as I see, are people are in a cult where they are so programmed to dismiss any critics, any former members, uh, for example, there's a great book I want to tell your listeners about, The Doctor Who Fooled the World. It's all about Andrew Wakefield, who started this anti-vax autism nonsense. It's been thoroughly debunked in this book. And what I'd love to see is more mental health professionals who are experts on phobias uh, teaching people how to do an, uh, an intervention, basically, where people are taught 
how to control their minds. So if I have a second, mm -hmm. I'll just say, if you have an elevator phobia, you can't imagine riding safely and comfortably in an elevator. All you can do is imagine plummeting to your death or being trapped for eternity. And teaching people, hey, modern elevators have emergency brakes and you have a phone, you'll never get stuck for eternity. The worst that will happen is you'll pee on yourself. And then there's a systematic way to teach people to visualize riding in an elevator, then systematic desensitization techniques in vivo, meaning doing it, to get over the fear. And what I'm seeing, you know, is that people can talk to their loved ones, not trying to persuade them with facts and attacking their beliefs, but motivational interviewing, asking them about their values, asking if they've gotten vaccinated in the past, do they have trust in a doctor or someone who's a healthcare professional, and there needs to be a gentle, incremental approach with gentle questions that motivates the person to realize, you know what, there really is very little risk. The worst that happen is I'll feel bad for a day or two, but then my life can be saved by these incredible vaccinations. Yeah, Stephen Hassan, we have to leave the conversation there. One thing that wasn't said, accountability for these social media companies, right, that are profiting off of misinformation. Yeah, and there are foreign actors and bad actors that want chaos, that want to destroy the government and democracy. Right. And those of us right. who care about our great country want to step up and support our country.